And here. Friday night scrapbooking. So happy to see you. Hello, hello from Southern California. So good to see you. Deb, uh, Debbie's here, Danette, Night Owl. I love this. <laughs> Susan, oh, so Deborah, Janice, Mary B. <laughs> I got so excited there. Cheryl's here, Liz is here, Mary Lynn is here. Welcome, welcome to Friday Night Scrapbooking. Thank you all so much. I love seeing those little hearts fly up on my screen. That just warms my heart and the little thumbs up. So thank you all for doing that, taking just a minute and sharing uh, your joy with me. So thank you so much for that. And it is so good to be here this Friday night. There's a lot to talk about tonight because we are going to be talking about more fun, fun and clever ideas for your scrapbooks. So um, we, I've got hopefully a lot of different tips and tricks for you packed in tonight. Some that you've hopefully maybe seen before, maybe some brand new tips and just kind of a framework for you to think about your pages. Thank you so much for those thumbs up. I love it. I just keep seeing them fly up my screen. <laughs> oh, that's so fun. So if you are new here, I just want to let you know where you can find something. Sorry, my, uh, my um, cord is kind of in the screen right there. <laughs> I'll get that back in place. Um, these are the places you can find me right here in the blue box. Um, some of you, most of you I see right now, um, Cheryl, Liz, uh, Sherry, Shirley, Jay, um, let's see, Brenda, um, Mandy, Tiffany, Krista, Mary Smith. Hi, Linda, Terry, Jerry, Jay. Oh, all you guys. A lot of you are on YouTube and uh, I also stream to Facebook as well. So uh, if you're on YouTube, there's a lot more information in the description. If you just hit that little more button and if you're on Facebook, look above the video and there's a description with some more links and things that I'll be talking about tonight in the description above the video. So um, love seeing all of your names pop up and welcome, welcome. So good to see you guys. <laughs> it's, it's awesome. I'm so happy you're here. Okay, so um, as promised, we are going to talk about more fun and clever ideas for your scrapbooks. But here's the thing, before we jump into this, I have to tell you there's some news and what's new. So before we jump into that, and now I have to go woo, over here, <laughs> Hello. <laughs> I want to let you know that actually, uh, let's see if I can point the right direction. Is it this way? <laughs> Woo, there we go. Um, here, actually, let me do this. I'm going to just move over there. How's that? Now I can scooch this way. Does that make sense? No. There we go. There we go. Paper crafters get organized. I have, I have been, blah, blah, blah. let me get my words out for you tonight. I was asked again to be part of Paper Crafters Get Organized Summit, and I was thrilled to be one of the presenters from all over the world for this fabulous organization summit. Some of you I know uh, did this last year with me, and I talked about my punch organization and how I uh, organize my punches and my punch binder. And this year I was quick on the draw and I said, I really want to talk about paper. I want to talk about how to organize our paper stash. So I am talking about the three bears and how to organize your paper with the three bears, the papa bear, the mama bear, and the baby bear. So I hope you can join the Paper Crafters Get um, Organized Summit. There is a free ticket that you can get and that's basically 
uh, everything is available for free, but you need to watch on the day that it's presented. So you have one day to watch all the videos for that day the next day and so forth. Now, if you are like me and want to just have things at your access, you can get the bundle and there's actually some more goodies attached to that bundle um, and you do pay for that. Uh, but one of the things I actually put into the bundle is a $5 coupon for my famous photo folders, which let's see, I don't even have one right here. Um, let's see, my, my little po photo folders these guys. So um, part of what the presenters are asked to do is, you know, contribute to this big bundle so that you get a lot of value for your money. So this is one of my little perks, as well as some brand new handouts that I created for helping you get organized. So that's it. That's it. <laughs> Paper crafters get organized. Um, the link, as I mentioned, it's in the description of this video. It's also posted on my Facebook page. And I also did send out an email. So maybe you got that as well. All right. So tonight, I also wanted to share, I'm going to switch over to my desk. I feel like I'm just sitting so far down in the... <laughs> in my chair. I've got to adjust my camera a little bit. Okay, but let's go over to my overhead. And now I'm going to have to bring that back into view because not only uh, do I have everything kind of set up here for tonight, I have like a whole, you guys, I have a whole stack of albums that I'm going to be sharing with you on a bunch of tools. But I also wanted to share some things I just got in my box today. And uh, I thought you might be interested in seeing that because it's brand spanking new. And that is the two new trimmer blades that just came out. So this is the Colonial trimmer blade. And this is the Pinking blade. And these are brand new to go in our trimmer. So um, I haven't even had a chance to open up my boxes. So I thought, let's do it. Let's check it out. We've got new colors. Don't you just love new colors? So this is the pinking. It's red. And now we can put that in its own little slot. You can see I have a lot of straight blades in here because I use those a lot. And um, sometimes I'll keep an old one in here uh, to make sure that I have one if I need to cut photographs. So I always try to use my old one for photographs. And then there's the Colonial. So that's got a little slot in there as well. So now we have finally some new blades for our trimmer. Isn't that fun? And uh, we'll have to try them out on another live and check into all that goodness. And also um, out came a few other things. And Lori got her free ticket, yes. Okay, good, good, good. Um, uh, what else came out is the brand new collection called Life at the Lake. And I'm not gonna take, you know, I could sit here and just like ooh and ah over all this stuff, but I just wanna give you a quick little overview and I'll have to do a layout. But this has um, the embellishment pack. So there is On the Lake embellishments, Escape to Nature, embellishments and grilling and chilling embellishments and gone fishing embellishments. Some matte cards, okay, just different um, matte cards. We're going to be talking about matte cards tonight. And uh, stickers, of course, we've got stickers and two different paper packs. So we have the uh, designer paper pack and I'll just do a quick, quick flip through. And I don't know, anybody else get this yet? Yes. Oh, good, Nancy. You got your free ticket too. Let's do a quick flip through. Oh, I like that one. Oh, I love that plaid. Oh, just love the plaid. Okay. I like the stripes. That's cute. It's got little bears on it. Um, and some kind of wood perky stuff. Um, green fishing lures. Uh, some buffalo check. Oh, I love, I love, <laughs> love black and white polka dots. I'm such a black and white girl and some canoe things. So uh, there's life at the lake. And then, um, okay, when I saw this, I was like, oh no, that's so not me. And you know, guys, I tell it like it is. I'm not crazy. Honestly, I am not crazy about the artwork on some of these fast to fab pages. But then I saw that the backside, which you can see here, 
is all tonal. And I thought, okay, that's worth it. I can use tonal. I can use bits and pieces. But truly, like this will not end up in my scrapbook because it's just it's just too much for me. This kind of artwork, I'm just telling it like it is. Um, and I think you'd rather me be honest, right? Than like, go, oh, I love it. No, I don't love it. But the other side is pretty fantastic. So um, I love having tonals and things to mix in with other pages. And, uh, you know, this is beautiful. I love this water print and this little speckly green. I don't know if you could caught that, but it is it is a really nice tonal print. And so is this yellow kind of wood. So even though I'm, I'm really happy that they did the, you know, kind of this bold print and maybe that is your thing. Totally fine. If that's your thing. I love it. You know, we're all different. We all craft our own joy. That's what is so wonderful about being creative is that you get to do what brings you joy. And, um, but I do like that they gave us choices, options. So there's life at the lake. There is also a little be happy, uh, card kit. This is, what is this? Be happy. I think this is kind of, um, mother's day ish. Like you can make the, some of these into mother's day cards. And also there is, uh, and where did I put it? Um, there is a new, let's see. One second, one second, folks. One moment, please. I think I may have put it in my other pile over here. Is it here? Um, here it is, here it is, found it. There is also a brand new, um, oh, there's, you know, it's kind of a lot of fun things, but I do want to mention there's this new welcoming woodblock prints. I love this a lot. This is my new gift with purchase in the shop. Remember I was saying, hang on on Tuesday. I was like, wait, it's coming. It's coming. So it came. So now all orders uh, of 125 in my shop, you get this print, this pack for free with your order. And it also comes with some matching embellishments, which are super cute. So just wanted to kind of share that. And then there also is a new Q2 sketch that you can get free with any order from my shop. And um, just as so you know, guys, I have not been able to get orders out today. So if you ordered yesterday or today and you want, just email me if you want this or if you want to add to your order so you can get this, or if you want the new sketch, just let me know. Cause I know it's kind of transition week this week. So, um, a bit, you know, I do have orders that are still in the queue and if the, I have not said I've shipped it, then you can always add to your order from the shop. So lots of new stuff. Um, just check it out. There's other things in the shop as well. And, um, just wanted to give you a super quick overview. Like that was, flying through the new stuff, but uh, check it out. It's so much fun. All right, we're gonna have to do more more good, good things with that. So what I wanna do now is actually kind of get into fun and clever. How do we make our albums fun and, you know, just put that little extra touch that just kind of makes everything just I don't know. I just, I love the details. I love the little details. And so what I did is I put together my top five tips for you for making fun and clever pages. And, um, oh, Kelly has a question. Do the flop stoppers need to tuck into something to work? No, no, they don't. Actually, I'm going to be talking about flop stoppers tonight. And, um, Carrie wants to know, where did I get the different color five by seven boxes? I have been sourcing them from different places, although I'm having a hard time getting the pink one. So I did get some from Michael's, um, but they seem to be sold out of pink now. Um, and I do know that the container store, they're Iris cases from Iris, I-R-I-S. And I do know that the container store has them as well. Okay, um, my top five tips. So getting back, thank you for the questions. Um, all right, uh, like the tonals better too, Janice says. <laughs> all right.
right. Um, oh, D Donna has a question. Let me just get these questions really quick. Um, I saw your session is on Saturday. What time? What session? I'm not sure what session Saturday, Donna. Um, maybe um, the pop crop is coming up next Saturday. Maybe that's what you saw, Donna. Um, the Saturday album in a days uh, were we finished those up, but those are available on replay in the classroom. Okay. <laughs> yeah, too cartoonish, right? Okay, you guys had a lot of a lot of comments. <laughs> All right, good. Okay, yeah, yeah, Mary, I want to be honest with you, and it's like, nope, those aren't going to end up in my books, um, but the backside will for sure. <laughs> okay, so um, yeah, let's see. Oh, thank you, Annette. Annette put a link to the container store where you can get some rainbows. Oh, the summit. Oh, the summit, Donna. Okay, hold on. What uh, saw my session is on Saturday. What time? I am not sure. I haven't had a chance to look at the schedule, but once you get a ticket, it will have a schedule of all the presenters. So we pre-record our sessions and then they put the um, put it all together for you, for us. Okay, so yeah. Um, but you can watch, I believe you can watch any time if you get the bundle. Um, I'm not sure if you get the free ticket or if you have to wait for each one to be released during the day. Okay, let's talk about five tips for making fun and clever pages. Um, thank you for the boxes. And, uh, you know, if I miss one, just put it back in the chat <laughs> toward the bottom. So, uh, you know, we can keep, keep working on those questions. So as I was thinking about um, you know, some of my favorite things to do in my album tonight, I wanted to give you a framework for things to think about that you can do something a little different with your um, scrapbook pages. So I'm going to go through one by one. And as I'm sharing different things in my album, I want you to kind of think, I'm going to keep coming back to these five categories. The first one is be creative with your journaling. And so I'm going to tell, show you and talk a little bit about some different things you can do with your journaling. The second one, you guys might know this one to be true that I love, and that is be creative with your peekaboos. And I'm going to talk about some of my latest <laughs> fanaticism with peekaboos, but I also have two videos that talk nothing about all the different things you can do with peekaboos, but they really have elevated how much fun, in my opinion, we can have with our scrapbook pages. The third one is be creative with the types of pages that you use. And I'm going to be giving you some examples of that and really kind of sharing how we can think outside the box with our pages. And then also be creative with your photos. Yeah, of course, we got to be creative with our photos. Think about, as I'm sharing, think about the sizes of photos that I've printed and how I'm using those photos in different ways on my pages. And then lastly, be creative with our product. And that's the one that most of us tend to kind of focus on is how can I be, how can I create a really fun page with my product? But I also want to challenge you to Think of products in different ways. Like maybe you don't always need to use the product in one certain way. Okay, so those are my five tips. So again, I'm going to run through that super fast. And that is be creative with your journaling. Be creative with peekaboos. Be creative with pages. Be creative with photos. And be creative with your product. So let's talk. start at the top with journaling. And I'm going to come back to my desktop and just share a few things. First off, I haven't really given a lot of attention to one of my kind of new favorite things, and that is the write on stickers. And I am loving these guys so much that they have their own box now. 
See, they have their own five by seven creative memories box. <clears throat> and this is on my cart. So you know how like my most reached for items end up on the top level of my cart in my little five by seven boxes. And the write on stickers are now in the top section of my cart. And they have two different sizes of write-on stickers. And you're kind of going, well, Lauren, I don't know they have anything this size. No, the write-on stickers usually come in a sheet like this, right? It's a big sheet. It's, it's long. <laughs> I should have left one intact. So they come like this, right? And I thought, I don't have anywhere to put that. <laughs> cut that up and put it in a box because I love my boxes. So I just took my write-on stickers and cut them into thirds and now they have a home in my little five by seven box. Now the other thing I want you to notice is that these guys are cut in all different lengths and that's because this is strip journaling at its easiest. You can get you know any size um journaling lines on here that you can. Uh, so you just cut it to whatever section you need for your page. Now it also comes in this teeny tiny little tiny strips as well. You can see I've been using those as well. And I also want to let you know these are great if you make a mistake on white paper, of course. So um, remember the um, write again, I think it was called. Uh, little stickers that we used to have for making, you know, correcting errors in our journaling. These can be used the same way. If you make a boo-boo, just peel off a little strip, stick it on top, and it is a little bit dimensional, okay? It is, um, but it is another way that you can uh, fix mistakes or just take and, you know, the, the other, that is what I love about these, actually. I write directly on here you know, I measure how how much I want to put my journaling on, and then I'll go. I'll make take my pencil and go. Okay, so if I want here, let me just kind of show. You. Let's just let's just get into it. I'll show you what I mean. So if I want to, I'm going to share my. I'm going to be kind of flipping back and forth in uh, from for different pages uh, in my album. So. We're gonna be kind of going back and forth here. Is this it? This is it. Okay, so this is a page and you can see right here, I used a little skinny because I didn't have very much space and I wanted to add some journaling right here. Let me get a little closer so you can see. Okay, there you go. Ooh, there. So what I ended up doing is I took my ruler and I go, okay, I only have three and a half inches long that I can write. Like I can't write, you know, the full length of my sentiment, uh, my write on stickers because, uh, you know, it, I don't have that much room. I only have this, this amount of room and, you know, you can measure or you can just go like this and go, okay, so let me see like here, this, I've only got this much room. So I know like if I'm going to make three lines, I can't go past that pencil line, right? I'm gonna keep my journaling within here. And then when I'm done, you can clip it. But you'll also see, I made them different sizes, right? So I made this one in the middle a little smaller because I kind of wanted it to be uneven. And, um, and then if you make a mistake, no biggie, just skip to the next one. <laughs> so easy, like, and, or if you're like, oh, I don't want to say that. I want to say something else. You just uh, go to the next sticker. They're very inexpensive. They come in a pack of two. And um, I love these new um, write-on journaling strips. And they're so, so easy. So you can see I've used it here. And then, um, let me see. I think I used it. Oh, there was another place I used it. Where did I put it? Um, I'll come to it when I find it. <laughs> I'll point it out. Okay, so that's one um, one bit with journaling. Write on strips, cut them up, put them in a box, have them handy so you can always uh, access them. Love love those. 
The other thing I want to share, another fun tip, is doing hidden journaling. And so let me kind of come back up here. And I want to share a couple fun things that we can do with that. And um, let me see. I'm going to start. I'm going to start here in this um, in my green album. Let me get you right here. So um, because there's there's something I want to kind of share uh, that I need to. I'm going to finish in here. So hidden journaling is what I call like when you have. Um, created a layout and you're, and you're thinking, oh gosh, that's such a pretty layout. Like I have, I really don't want, you know, a block with, you know, some more story to tell. Or as I was kind of explaining on this layout in on Tuesday is that these are kind of three, at least three kind of different events, um, actually four and so to journal under each one was not going to kind of work for me. So what I wanted to do actually is kind of tell a story about this photo. And some you some of you have heard me talk about it, but it's the, this was our one year anniversary cake. And so because this is a top loading and I'm going to share different um, formats for side loading, you can do, you know, pull out and pull up and different things, depending on whether you're working on traditional scrapbook pages or on top loading pages. And top loading pages are easy to do a pull up because you've got the opening here at the top. So you can see right here, it says pull. And basically what I did is I just took a dot grid card punched a tab. So I've got all my tools here because I'm going to be talking about a lot of them. Punched a tab with some complimentary paper. And then um, I used my sentiment stickers, uh, you know, they had all these different fonts for adding the little direction. So this one says pull, you know that that just uh, is something you can pull and take out. So my journaling about our cake is on the card and then it can just go right back in. So hidden journaling, so fun to do, super easy, especially if you have a little tab punch that you can just reach in and pull that. So that's one uh, way. In my first Fun and Clever video, you'll, you'll remember I had one because it was a traditional scrapbook page. I had kind of a side loading hidden journaling that you can pull out this way. And um, you can do that same kind of idea with the so on, on the side with a traditional scrapbook page. So I want to flip over to something that I was going to finish, but then I thought, no, I'm going to save it and share with you. So this is another page where I did the layout and then I needed to write more, do some more journaling. And so what I decided to do was make another hidden journaling pocket. Now, this is another technique that you can do in order to have a place to slide in your journaling. So on this one, I just took a uh, coordinating paper. And if you notice, I, I wrote on vellum. And so don't forget our beautiful vellum paper. You know, I have a stash from old CM of vellum that's just, you know, still beautiful. And I use it. And with our vellum um, tape runner, okay, can you even see where I taped it? It is it's taped on there and I used the vellum adhesive. And if you make sure you kind of find a, 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 um, a strategic spot, like I put it under teapot, I put that vellum adhesive and you really, it blends in. You really can't even see where the adhesive is, but the vellum adhesive is wonderful. I love it for using with vellum, you know, creative memories has such great adhesive. So, um, so I put the vellum on top of the paper, but it was very thin and I needed a little more substance. So what I did is um, just cut some white cardstock and made a second layer. So this is nice and sturdy, like you can hold on to it. It's not gonna flop. The other thing I did, and here's where we go into use products differently, is, um, oops, where are they? If you guys have seen, 
trying to get it out of my cart here. Hold on. Ah. Ah, here it is. We have, um, from Creative Memories, we also have little packets of um, sticker tabs, right? Like, you remember these? And they also come in colors for the uh, school pages. They come in colors. These just are super thick, okay? They're super thick tabs. So you can also use these for peekaboo pockets and different things, but I don't know if you can see. So these are, you can, you know, kind of see, they're super thick. These are another product from Creative Memories. We don't always remember to that, you know, to pull these out. And what I wanted was a little spot up here that was gonna be where you could grab to pull out. But I didn't want the whole tab because I did these nice, fun little angles here, I didn't want the whole tab to stick up because it just looked weird to me. So what I ended up doing is I just cut this tab basically here and here. And you can see, and then just angled it down. But it's just a nice, thick um, little tab that you can grab onto to pull the journaling out. So there's a, a bunch of different products, right? We're using differently. So I'm using this differently. I used the corner rounder. Remember, it's a two-way corner rounder. So you just pop this in, clip it, and you get this fun edge detail on your cards, right? So much more fun than just a plain corner. This is uh, just a little strip from the um, tag punch at the one inch, cut at the one inch mark and added to my page here. And you're gonna see how that just is a layering piece in just a minute. So then the um, idea is, well, then how do I get the journaling in there? How do I get it to slide in and out? So here is one little tip for you. I'm gonna flip my car my um, picture over. Ta-da! Do you guys see what that is? <laughs> this is foam tape. Yeah, it's foam tape. So I have created a little pocket that this is going to slide in and you, you're going to see that it's going to stop. Like you can't, you can't push that in anymore. So it's going to stop right where I wanted it to stop because I have that foam tape going across the bottom. So I made a little pocket out of my photo with foam tape. And so that's just going to sit right inside my page. So I'm going to pull this out and, and stick it down, down together so you can see how that's going to go in. And um, it does give a little dimension to your page, but uh, I'm fine with that because um, this album is not super super big. So I'm just going to put this in so I can see kind of where I'm going to add it. I did add cardstock to the back of my photo. Just seeing if I get this in here straight. I don't want to, let me just take this out for a second. I don't want to mess up because foam tape is not very forgiving, right? Okay, so there it is. The foam tape is stuck down. Let's make sure I didn't get my card stuck to it. I'm going to take that out, make sure that's stuck down on the three sides. And now this is going to be able to slide in and out so easily, as long as it doesn't get hung up on that piece of paper, that strip. I did really adhere this backing strip down so that you could easily take that in and out. But it is, it's kind of getting a little stuck on that. Just something to be aware, I would probably, ooh, maybe I'd put a little more paper up behind that to get that so it doesn't stick. And then um, just slide those pages right back in and you're all set. So just another technique for hidden journaling. And I'm getting stuck on something on this side. Hang on. Okay, there we go. Um, I also did add one of my little arrow stickers. These are the read more directions and the little arrow so that, you know, it's kind of pointing. Grab that. There's more inside. And then also just another tip 
uh, lots of fun things you can do with journaling. This is, again, uh, some of my sentiment stickers, and I put that on vellum and just made this really kind of fun um, title over here. And just keep an eye out for those little details to me that I love to do that just kind of add a little something to the page. I'll be coming back to this album, but I also want to share another um, fun journaling tip. This is my 2024 uh, album called Our Year in Color. And uh, this is what I kicked off at the beginning of the year. And my third Friday scrapping folks um, are working through this album with me. And so I'm not going to share the whole thing, but I am going to share my first layout just because it does go over a lot of different ideas that we can use in our album. So here we go. This layout is my January layout. And basically on here, I am doing a lot of those five things that I've been talking about. The journaling, peekaboos, pages, photos, and product. Okay, so let's jump in and kind of look at all of these. So keeping in, in line with journaling, right here I have a pull-out journaling card that is talking about this darling little kitty. He's our newest grand cat. So um, he's the third cat that Ellen has, and um, his name is Hoji. So I ended up making... Um, a little pocket in here, used the tag punch, and I wanted this to be bigger than two and a half. So I cut this at three inches. You can see I cut it at three inches, but you can still just wiggle that paper underneath and punch and then just take your scissors and trim off these little extra edges that don't get cut. So you don't have to just stick at two and a half. This is a three inch wide um, card because I just wanted a little more room to write my story. So again, use product in outside the box, right? Okay, so that's my little um, hidden journaling for this page. And uh, I just added a little baker's twine for fun on here. The other thing I want to mention about journaling, now that we've kind of flipped into this book, is that um, there are so many wonderful things that you can do to add details to your page. This um, is a sticker, memory sticker from the This Life collection. This is <clears throat> a sentiment sticker from all the different, this is actually from April's um, gift when you purchase something in my shop and it's uh, right here, it says, let the sun shine, or maybe it was right here. And I just cut it out and I stuck it on a layering shape. And now it says, let the sun shine here, because that's what I was talking about in these photos. So you can use stickers, you know, sentiment stickers, but I also want to share another favorite tip and that is to use Canva. Canva, don't forget about my friend Canva. <laughs> Canva is so awesome. So I was looking at these two pages and I thought, hmm, what can I do to kind of make a little, um, a little extra that flows across all the different parts to this? And I'm going to come back. There's a lot going on here. I'm going to come back to so what I ended up doing is I went into Canva and I created a little printable. So this is my first try and it was too big. So I had to try it again, but I'm going to do a really quick screen share so you can see my Canva card. So I just put in, I said, I want a new Canva that is uh, four by six. You have to make sure you choose inches. And then you can see on here, I just added the titles I wanted. See how each one of these is a different thing? And I went through all the fonts because I'm a font girl and found this fun font that I wanted. So for these layouts, I was able to create some cohesiveness with the titles just by um, 
printing this on, uh, you know, download it and then print it on uh, from Canva. And I did print this. I know you're going to ask. I did print this on my Epson PM400. So let me come back. I did print this on my Epson PM400. It is beautiful. And yes, indeed, I used Red River paper. You guys know this is my go-to. I love Red River paper. This is 60 pound polar mat. And um, the four by six was on sale, I think back at Christmas. So I bought a few boxes of this just so I can have some things to print like this um, whenever I needed to. So sometimes you don't have to think about, you know, oh, getting the sticker letters out. But, you know, that's fun too. But uh, remember Canva for doing like a series of titles that may add that fun little detail to your pages. So you can see I did, I actually wanted this to be um, stand out. So this was a different font. But the other ones, I think here I did New Year's Day. And then I did... Um, downtown LA, Earth Cafe, and then I did Huntington Gardens, all in the same font, all from that same card. And I just cut them apart and made them into little banners because I love banners, okay? So easy, easy enough to do. All right, um, so that is a little bit about all the journaling fun that we're having on these pages. But in addition, um, I also want to point out some other things since we are here. And that is, remember I said, have fun with the types of pages you use. And if you look at this, um, when I was, when I kicked off this um, workshop, the uh, seasons workshop, if you remember, I took a multi-pocket page. Okay, so actually, let me... Let me grab one. A multi pocket page. Where are you? Here we go. <clears throat> okay, they look like this. And I cut it right here at the slit. So there's a slit. Let's see, is it on this side? Right here. And I just cut that apart. You're like, what? Lord, why'd you do that? Yep. I did cut that apart. And then on this side, I punched two slots for where the brackets go. So if you look in here, let me see if I can bring that up a little closer. If you look where I laced that through, okay, that is a punched hole right here in the plastic in this plastic edge. So I cut it apart and then I took this part, flipped it over, punched two holes in here, and then I added this. Um, so now I have my portrait orientation. Then I added the landscape orientation behind it. And then I added the happy album pocket behind that, <laughs> which is, so, you know, different types of pages in here. So those, the reason I love this is that it gives kind of stories within a layout that you can create um, that add fun and interactive elements to your pages uh, and make it kind of fun. So each, so this was about Hoji. This was another story. This was about John's uh, drive that he took. And yes, I did make my husband write on my journaling card. <laughs> I gave him a, here's the story card. And I said, honey, can you please go write about these photos? And he did. Sweet thing. So um, I loved reading what he wrote because you know what? It's hard sometimes to get those male perspectives, right? Or partner perspectives, so, um, you know, I'm usually the historian and I'm the one doing all the journaling and it is so refreshing to have someone else's perspective in my book. So I'm so appreciative of that. And then this is um, 
again, uh, from my travel sentiment stickers, from my sentiment stickers, the travel collection, Adventure Awaits. And I just, again, put that on a layering shape, a banner, and stuck that down. You can also see that my um, sentiment stickers, do you see that? I stuck it right on the photo, friends. Like, why not? I love it. I love that look. This just says the scenic route. And just for fun, it is on the photo. So um, have, you know, when I, when I, the reason I developed sentiment stickers was like a personal thing. I had tried stamping and I was pretty good at stamping in my albums, but it was such a process. I'd have to get my stamps and, you know, get the stamping board out and practice and practice and, you know, is that the color I want? Is that the size I want? Is it the right size? Will it fit? Is it going to fit on my, you know, my tag punch? And is it our tab punch? And will it fit here? Will it fit? So I said, you know what? Stickers are so much easier. And that's why I started the sentiment sticker. So I have this whole collection of all these different things that we can do that just add that fun little detail. So this one, you can see it says the scenic route, like this one, the sunshine, adventure awaits, all those little, little fun little bits. So then on the back side, this was another story of when I had to go for jury duty and I was able to tell that story. Then this was when we went to Earth Cafe and then Huntington Garden. So now this, when I turn the page here, this becomes its own little mini story within my layout. Okay, so have fun with these different formats of pages. I'm telling you, you will love it. So one thing I wanted to share as, um, and so I stopped again, I stopped myself from finishing this up is a little bit also about another favorite product and that is the Flop Stopper. So I know um, I had the question like, how do you use those things, Lauren? How do you use it? I'm gonna, I'm gonna share a few ways. So this is another product I developed out of necessity because I was so tired of my peekaboos flopping all over the place. And I'm gonna share more on that in a minute too. But when you get them, you get a pack of 25 doubles. So they actually come like this. And, um, and then if you use them intact, they are a tab. So you can see right here, this is a tab. I used this as it is, and I folded it like that, okay? I folded it over, why isn't it focusing? There we go. And then um, you take the adhesive off and you use it as a tab. So that's what I did right here on the bottom, if you can see. And what I wanted to do was make another tab for this page and, um, and I said, nope, I'm not going to do that because I'm going to show you tonight how we do that together. So what I'm going to do, I folded this over and I'm just going to take the um, adhesive backing off. So you kind of have to get in there and just pull that little bit of red backing off. Okay, here and here. little super sticky super sticky let's see if I can get off. <laughs> there's just no easy way to get these little backings off it's like the peekaboo pockets too huh okay so now that's got both uh of the red strips off and now what I'm going to do is line this up I'm going to leave it open and what I want these to do is kind of be a little overlapped so I'm going to kind of position it right here and I want this tab to end up being right there. So I'm gonna zoom closer so you can see what I'm doing here. <laughs> it's kind of hard because they're clear, they're super clear, but maybe the reflection will catch it there. Okay, so I just added that side right here and then I'm gonna fold it over and adhere that down to the top. So now I have this super clear tab. And you're like, yeah, well, you're not gonna be able to see that, Lauren. No, I'm not. So I'm going to take a matte card. As you can see, I've already been playing with this one. 
and um, the blast from the past, our old <laughs> circle maker, you can see mine's worn out. Um, and I'm going to punch the three quarter inch circle. So if you don't have one of these, just see if you can find a circle punch that's a three quarter inch circle. Mine still gets a little stuck. I think I need to use some lube or dry lube on it. And I'm gonna punch two of these. And what I did, and, and you're gonna say, wow, Lauren, that fits perfectly on there. Yeah, because I designed it that way. <laughs> yes, I did. I made sure that I, I had a punch that if you wanted to decorate that tab, it would fit perfectly. So um, I'm gonna use my extra strength crafter tape and I think we should all bombard customer service and say, we want the extra strength crafter tape um, or a tape runner back, please bring it back and maybe they'll bring it back for us. And you can see then that circle just goes right there on the tab. I'm gonna flip it over and just, let's see, now you can't see, but I'm gonna do the same thing to the other side over here. And now I have a tab on both sides. So you can see this first one, I, I just wanted to add a little flower. So I just added a little flower sticker. And then on the other side, I added a little, I don't know, like a little firework or some burst, burst sticker. Those are both from the This Life collection. And so now I have this fun um, double tab lifting, like I could put lift on here, but I already had a sentiment right here. So I didn't want to put more words personally right here. And I thought stickers would be kind of more fun. So now I have places that I know, oh, I'm going to grab that. It kind of gives me the idea. I need to grab that. And now I have this that I can just grab and turn the page. So those are one use of the flop stoppers as a tab. And then I'll be sharing how to use them as a flop stopper as well. So um, this page kind of covered a lot of different things on um, using different products, on using a different title formats. And the other thing I wanna point out before we leave is that, um, and I'm gonna go back for a minute, is that I also used different sizes for my photos. So when I was looking at this, um, there was this funny story, and I wrote it about it on here, of uh, Hoji trying to get, he cannot get up on the counter. But this is actually from a video. And um, <laughs> he tries his best, but he like does push-ups with the handle of the cabinet. And it was just so funny. He made us laugh so much. So I wanted three little snapshots to tell the story of what he was trying to do. John and I were both visiting Ellen and we just all laughed so hard watching him do this. And um, I thought, well, what's a good size? So these are actually formatted at 1.75 by 2.75 or five, hold on, two, two and a half. So these are one and three, no, sorry. Yeah, one and three quarters. Yep, one and three quarters by two and a half, okay? And that way I was able to get three fun little photos on this area that was a four by six. Now I could have put full four by six photos here, but it's so fun to me to tell the story in little in little format, right? In smaller format. And so think about when you're printing, and I, you know, I'm a big advocate of printing at home, that you can print your photos like this one. I printed two on a four by six because I didn't need, you know, full size photos in here to tell this story. So I was able to print those smaller. And then the same on the bonsai and the flowers, I printed two on each four by six. Those aren't large photos cut down. I actually printed them this way on a four by six. Okay, so that's a little bit getting into your photos. Have fun with your photos and try different sizes. 
So I'm going to flip back to this page because you may have seen it when I opened it up. And this is another way I love the photo element. So on this on this four by six, you can see I printed um, six one and a one and three quarter. I'm going to get all my numbers mixed up, but no, this is one and three quarter by one and three quarter. And what this matches perfectly is the Creative Memories Square Punch. Okay, so if you look, this punch is what I used to punch out my photos. Where'd those photos go? They are right here on my calendar page. And I am so in love with this format. And if you are like me and you take a lot of photos of food, my friends, this is the funnest thing to do for food photos. Okay. Like if you're, you know, if you're like, well, I, I love taking pictures of my food, but I don't want to make a whole scrapbook layout of my food pictures. Well, maybe you do. Maybe that brings you joy. And I say, go for it if it does. But now I know exactly where my food pictures are going. Those silly food pictures, like this is me eating here. This is another time we had really good food. This was like one of my favorite coffee places. And it's a perfect place to print those photos super small. Use a four by six. And I use, I use my photos program. Um, I showed on my last uh, third Friday how I get these sized. And um, if you don't have that, you can use a program like PicMonkey or you can use Canva to resize your photos. Okay, and then uh, I just print and then use the square maker to cut them out. And along with food, I also put little events that happened throughout the month. And then I also documented my high and low, which is part of the weather project we're doing. Now, if you notice, there is actually one square here that is not like the other. Okay. <laughs> and this is a little surprise. And um, if you'll notice, this is actually a flop stopper and it's holding something down. So if you get um, my flop stoppers, you can also uh, take it cut the tab in half so that you just have a single piece like this, okay? And that's what I call a flop stopper. So if I lift this, you can see that that kind of sticks up. And yes, my friends, that is the world's tiniest little peekaboo pocket. Now, I'm sure you can make one smaller, but I wanted to make a peekaboo pocket that was big enough to fit these little squares on my calendar page because this was such a fun day. It was when we went to the Huntington Gardens and so there's more food and I, I didn't wanna just keep filling up the squares because this all happened on the same day, but I didn't have room. Remember in the big pages I was doing, I didn't have room for more and more photos. So I decided to make this teeny tiny little peekaboo pocket. Isn't it the cutest thing ever? And then in order to keep it down, I just added a flop stopper. So that's why this has a page protector on. These are traditional scrapbook pages. So you can see it works. Flop Peekaboo pockets, flop stoppers work on traditional scrapbook pages as well. And um, so then it's just this fun little um, flap that you can look at. It's so cute. You guys, it's just, it's itty bitty. So how did I do that? You might be asking. Well, I'm glad you asked. And if you missed my video um, a couple Tuesdays, I think it was maybe three Tuesdays ago, you um, there's a video that says why you need this <laughs> in your craft room. And this is what uh, is called a heat sealer. And I love this thing. I'm not sure if Debbie's here. Debbie, are you here, Deb? And she's like, she texted me. She was like, Lauren, I'm in love with this thing. I love it. I love it. I've been making so many different peekaboo pockets with all kinds of fun 
things. Now I did get feedback. This is the 16 inch and I did get feedback that the 12 inch that they sell, because as soon as I talked about it, the 16 inches sold out on Amazon, but the 12 inches will fit if you want. Um, and I don't have one, but I was told it works for the full size peekaboo pockets. So during that video, I showed how I took a six by 12 peekaboo pocket and I added in um, some confetti and a border strip and I put little floating dolphins and sailboats in here and then I sealed it. So this has this beautiful heat seal on it and so all that confetti doesn't come off. And this is a size that I can put four by sixes right here in my peekaboo pocket. So that is also how I made the littlest um, peekaboo pocket here. And what I recommend, and I mentioned this in my video, is to create templates for the size that you want to create. So this is a one and a three quarter by one and three quarter square, which is what is the size for the calendar page. So I just took, actually, I kind of took up a beat up peekaboo pocket that I wasn't going to use on my page because it kind of got scratched. You know how sometimes, well, at least in my room, it'll fall on the floor and then I don't see it. And then I step on it and then it gets scratched. I'm like, eh, that shouldn't go in my book. Um, so, or if you got like a six by 12 that you want to cut to a um, six by seven or whatever, you can make a template. And so you make this fun little temp, this square, and then you just put it in there and then you heat seal um, around your template. Okay. And then I just cut the edges off. So that's how I made, I actually made two. <laughs> so I have one ready to go, um, two of this little bitty size. And then you just take your scissors and trim off, but you can see this makes a beautiful edge, heat sealed edge for the peekaboo pockets. Okay. Hopefully you can see that it's, it's, and it's, um, it's, uh, it's sturdy. It's a sturdy seal. So I had been trying the uh, fuse tool for a while. And then when I came across this idea, oh, it just, it's the best, you guys. You can use it for so many things. You can, you, you can seal um, page protectors if you want to. You can seal um, other types of plastic. You can, um, oh gosh, where did I put that? I took, um, what, where are they? I took uh, la, 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 the, um, the, the cheapy page protectors. Oh, yep, like this, this kind, is this it? Anyhow, you can, well, you can make your own like divided. I made border strip divided, um, pages. I mean, you know, I have to go through, I have to make a video on all the things you can do with the heat sealer. I'm not going to kind of go down there because we're talking about scrapbook pages today, but the heat sealer, thumbs up, love it. <laughs> okay. So, um, think about all those fun ways to add those little details with different sizes of photographs on your page. And also, um, different sized custom. Now you can do anything basically with your page protectors. So another thing, um, I just want to bring up since I have the heat sealer front and center is you can use that, um, also for, I'm going to bring up another page. Um, let's see, where is it here? Here we go. You can see. So here's where I actually need a flop stopper. But inside this, I took the confetti punch out from my border strip and I put the confetti in here. And every time I opened it, the confetti danced out on my page. So what happened? Oh, I used my heat sealer. And now I sealed, I put my photos in there that I wanted. 
and hold on, let me get a little closer this way. I put my photos in here that I wanted and I put the confetti in that I wanted. See how it moves around? And now it won't come out because I took my heat sealer and I sealed this edge right here. So now I can have all this fun in my pocket, in my peekaboo pocket, and all that confetti is not going to come out. It's in there for good. So if I wanted to just keep this from flopping open whenever I turn the page like that, what I'm gonna do is just use the one half of the flop stopper and take off that red backing again, and then just find kind of an inconspicuous place. Either you could do it down here. I like, I tend to like to put it um, to the left of my peekaboo pocket if it's on this side or to the right over here. And then you just put it, you know, adhere it down. When it is an added to the page, like now when you see it on the layout, you really kind of don't notice it. And that was the whole plan, that they're inconspicuous on your page. You can make them conspicuous by adding um, stickers or, you know, a punched element to it or a lift, a direction sticker but you can also make them inconspicuous. So now when I turn my page, it's in place. And then if I want to see what's under it, I just lift that and put it back when I'm done. So under here, I also, in, in the photo arena of doing fun things with your photos, right? Fun and clever things with your photos. Sometimes, I mentioned this on Tuesday, I didn't have a whole lot to say. And so I took one of the photos and there were a lot of the fireworks photos on here. And I decided to use my custom cutting system and just gave it kind of a fun edge. And I really love the effect of that for a journaling box. So take, you know, you can use a photo in conjunction with a journaling box if you don't have, you know, a whole lot to say and then just do kind of a fun edge on your photo. <laughs> on your foot, <clears throat> on your photo. Okay, time for a drink. Sorry. <laughs> mm. And I'm going to come over to the chat for just a second here. I see there's a lot going on over here. Okay, so that is just another way to use a flop stopper um, on your page. Sue says she just got her heat sealer and... Um, can't get into a scrap room. Wait till you start with it. Um, it's so much fun. Okay. And it is on my Amazon favorites page if you um, are interested. Now I use, um, you know, Mavis, what I would recommend is testing. Get an old piece of plastic and test what works because I was using like four to five and then holding it for 10 seconds. And Deb was saying, oh, Debbie is here. Yeah. <laughs> Deb was saying she, you use it at eight, right, Deb? And hold it again for 10 seconds. So I think there might be some variations in, you know, in the product or how much it heats up. And I do know the more you use it, the hotter it gets. So the more you use it, you may not want to hold it down as, as long, or you may need to adjust the heat. So just be careful and um, you can always lift it and then look and see if that seal is, is made. And if it's not, just press it back down for a couple more seconds. So there's a little practice to getting going with it. Okay. Um, again, I wanted to mention <clears throat> there was another way to use the um, flop stopper. <clears throat> I mentioned keeping it inconspicuous, but also it can be part of a design element, right? So this is another way that I use the flop stopper directly on the page, not as a tab, but as, you know, something to hold this down so it wouldn't flop. But instead, again, I used the circle punch, okay? The little circle punch and punched out a piece of coordinating paper and then added my little direction tab uh, sticker to it. So now this says lift, 
you just lift that and then you can see what's under it and then it just goes back in place. So um, there's, you know, a lot of different fun things. Just let your imagination run wild for all the different ways you can use products, you know, outside the box. But um, definitely a favorite is the heat sealer for, um, you know, just really letting your creativity have some fun with some different things. Okay. Um, let's see, where do I want to go next? <laughs> I think I've shown a lot. Um, let's see journaling. I've talked about that. Um, oh, I, I had a note. One thing I want to mention matte cards. So if you notice, this is an actual, this isn't paper. This is a matte card. And sometimes we need to have that little bit more um, weight to the paper to use. And so a lot of times I will reach for matte cards instead of paper to do um, the decorations or to create tabs. So you can see here, this was um, a circle that I punched out of the matte card. And I, I left it here because I wanted to remind you this fun little tip that Noreen did a while back and I loved it. I always remember using it. Um, this is made by the circle punch. So if you want to create kind of your own, this is ca kind of called a whale tail tab. And if you want to create your own on that, you can just take um, the circle punch and I'm just going to flip it over so I can see where I'm punching. Create a circle. Do you guys remember when she did this? I thought, oh, I love it, so perfect. And you just fold it in half, okay? Fold it in half. And you could use this circle as a tab as well. I mean, I love that. I did that on another page back here. If you wanna see this whole album, I did a flip through this past Tuesday. So, um, you know, you can go watch that on YouTube, but I'm just kind of trying to keep focused on, um, you know, technique today. Here we go. Here's a circle. I use the circle punch right here to actually make a tab for this peekaboo pocket. So you don't always have to make it with, um, you know, this tab punch or flop stopper or whatever, but you could use just a circle. And then if you want to make the whale tail design, you grab your corner rounder again pop this little guy in here and just kind of guess where you want that little um, design to go down, right? So you just kind of push that in there. Oh, I think I made this one a little bigger like that. And now you have your own fun little tab. You just can add adhesive inside. And then, you know, you could add this to a peekaboo pocket. I don't know if I have one to add to, but yeah, you guys get the idea. So um, let's see. Uh, I don't have one that I can show you, but you just, you know, stick it on and, and, and add your adhesive. So that's one way that I also use mad cards in a different way. So using your product in a different way. This is also done from a mat card and it gives you just that extra bit of substance to your tabs when you're doing that. And I also, um, there's another one. Oh yes, I also want to remind you here, if you notice what this is, this is also a mat card. This is a saying from a mat card from the Welcome Home collection. And it was, you know, four by six. It was big and I didn't want big. I just wanted it as a fun little element to my page. So I decided to run this through with a die. And um, I just took my mat card with the sentiment on it, put the die on top, ran it through my die cut machine. And now I have this really cool um, element instead of just this big bulky four by six that I have to fit on my page. Okay, so just another little tip for uh, mat cards, you know, think outside the box when you're doing that. This is a fun title with stickers, uh, sticker letters, easy to do. 
Here's another tab with, um, again, using a matte card for that extra dimension on there. And you can see I need to add another flop stopper. I haven't gone back to add my, my flop flop stoppers in here yet. So almost finished with this album, but there's a few little touches I have to finish. Okay. Um, when, since we're talking about product a little bit too, I want to flip to the back and also mention another way we can work with our product is it doesn't always have to be the way it is, right? So if we're dealing with a very thin um, piece of um, pattern paper, right? This is kind of sometimes hard to work with. Like if you want to make a title um, or something like that. So one of the tricks I use over and over and over again, I just wanted to share this here, is adding cardstock for bulk. And uh, so like this die is um, Marion Bright. I cut this die once in the thin pattern paper and I cut it twice in white, heavy white cardstock. And then I just glued that together. So now this title, if you felt it, you could feel it's, it's raised. It has texture, it has dimension, but I started with super thin paper. So, Adding cardstock, you know, and that's a card maker's trick, is always helpful when you want to bulk up some something that's, um, you know, not very heavy. So I hope you can kind of see, maybe if I pull it out a little bit, you can, let me see, pull it down here. You can kind of see the dimension on that Mary, hopefully you can see, but it, it's really a beautiful effect um, when you're cutting. And I think, Deb, you had a question about cutting with the Cricut. And sometimes you have to, you know, you can do the same thing or you can glue, glue it together first, like really glue it <laughs> and then try cutting, um, you know, let that, that glue. Um, and I also know I, the, the sticker backing stuff that I have, I'm not really thrilled. I've got to find, I'm going to do a search and try to try some different adhesive backings that you can add um, bulk to thinner paper and then I would cut it and then you also have your adhesive. I think Cricut makes some. I might even have some from Cricut and I think Silhouette does as well. Um, if anybody has done that, pop that in the chat or in the comments and let us know what your favorite um, product is to bulk up thin paper uh, so that you have adhesive and it cuts well with the Cricut. Okay, um, so those are just a few little tips on um, switching up our product, right? So using the matte cards, cut them with a the die, using the mini circle punch um, and, and different things like that. Um, let's see. Also, you can use stickers as uh, tabs. That um, stickers and also embellishments as tabs. You know, if you want to just do something a little different, pop an embellishment on instead of you know a circle or a tab punch or a flop stopper. Use an embellishment for something different, and then it kind of becomes part of your cluster for the area. And it works double as a, you know, something to grab onto to lift. Um, okay. Mm -hmm. You can make the tag punch bigger. I talked about that. Um, turning the circle punch into a tap. So don't forget that fun little tip. And also, I was going to just remind you that um, Canva... Not only can you print titles in Canva, but you can also, I did a whole uh, Friday night scrapbooking on how you can use Canva to print digital files from Creative Memories, right? So these are all printed from um, Canva. I, I pulled the digital elements into Canva and then you can size them and reprint them. Now this is not printed on the polar mat, and so they're kind of a little flat. 
If I reprinted these on the polar mat, I know they would be stunning and just so rich and, and crisp the color. Um, and so I would definitely recommend a photo paper to get better color from your digital um, print, print at home stuff with your, uh, like if you're gonna print elements from Canva. So just a quick reminder, I have a video on how to do this so you can check that out. But if you go, oh gosh, I missed out on those embellishments or those stickers, just remember you can use Canva and do print or do print and cut with that and create your own DIY embellishments. Super easy. Okay. Um, all right, let me see. Uh, um, let me look at my notes where I am. Um, okay, pages again. I want to go back and um, just remind you I need, I need like a huge, I need a, a huge table, you guys. I've got things piled up everywhere. Okay, um, let me just kind of go through a few things that I have pulled out. This is one that I wanted to remind you that using pages in a different way and, and you can create peekaboos within pages. So using product, using your pages in a different way. So I did this, um, I have a video on this one as well, and the handouts on how to do it. But this is a peekaboo border, right? So if you see, you'll notice this is cut all the way through the page so that you can see the border that lies behind it. And if you just think about that concept, like you could make, you know, rectangles down here and cut out rectangles of your page and then show something underneath, you know, use the same idea both, you know, for, for both pages. Just like on this page, I used the peekaboo for the border on this side, but it also works for this layout as well. Okay, so have fun thinking outside the box and how you can use a product in a different way and pages in a different way. So I just wanted to remind you of that layout. And then um, I also, if you want some more inspiration for peekaboos, my December days class, I have so many ideas on flip ups, flip out, pull out tabs, you know, all these different things that you can do with peekaboo pockets. And so I do a lot of, you know, different uh, fun things with my December days and the multi pocket pages. And that gives so many different ideas on even how to use these guys as they are intact without, you know, cutting them in half. So um, you can see, you can pull this out and this is a little mini album within the um, pocket. So you can just go to town with all the different clever things that you can do with your peekaboo pockets and multi-pocket pages together. So I just wanted to remind you of these resources as well. I've done several videos on um, my December days, but lots of ideas on multi-pocket pages in those videos. Um, I wanted to bring this album out because I wanted to remind you again about uh, size of photos. And I did this layout on one of my latest uh, Friday night scrapbookings. And if you remember on the back of this uh, six by 12 peekaboo pocket, I ended up printing all of these um, photos. These are, what did I, I think these were three, no, two, two and three quarter. That's right. Two and three quarter. I wanted two and three quarter because I wanted to be able to see the paper in the background, but two and three quarter by two and three quarter squares. And look, I've got two, four, six, eight photos kind of representing our trip 
on the back of one six by 12 peekaboo pocket. So again, think about your photos as a fun way to add, um, you know, clever and fun ideas to, to your scrapbook pages. And that's just as simple as, you know, printing your photos in a different size, in a different format. Okay, so I wanted to remind you about size that way. And let's see, this one, now those went small, but you can also go the other direction and go big with your photos. So this is also a layout that I did um, a long time ago. Oh, wait, let's see. How come this one? Uh, I, I don't think I put this <laughs> Let's see. Here it is. Oh, this one. This is the one I was going to share. So this is two five by sevens that I printed. So again, we're going bigger rather than smaller, but a different size. Two five by sevens, and I did um, two five by seven peekaboo pockets. But when I overlap them, they make a seven by seven square. So this one I I shared again on YouTube long time ago, but I just kind of, again, want to put everything in one place that you can remember and think about, you know, doing different with your photos and sizes. So this was just another example of adding larger to create yet another larger uh, uh, format for your photos. Okay, and this uh, this one, I have a video also, as I mentioned, on peekaboo pockets. I go over a lot of these tips and tricks on all of these different ways to use your peekaboo pockets in those two different videos. And um, in case you don't know, you can search uh, videos on my channel. So you can go to my channel and hit in the search bar, like search this channel, and then put in peekaboos or... Um, I don't know, you know, whatever keyword that you're looking for and uh, see if you can find it. And that may be a way to quickly find the video that you're working for, uh, working, looking for, not working for. <laughs> okay. Um, okay. So that was another album I wanted to share. Um, and then from my very first fun and clever video, I wanted to remind you that you, you know, now we've got the beautiful six by 12 peekaboo pockets. As you've seen, I've used those over and over again. But before we had those, there was another uh, fun thing that you could do. And, and it's still easy enough to add to your pages. I've got to flip and find it, friends, here. Um, and that is to modify your pages, here it is, using, you know, if you have old um, Creative Memories pages that you're not going to use anymore, I took this photo, and this is again in my first Fun and Clever video, and I showed how I modified and just added this um, extra flap to the page, and it's it's kind of a it's a flip out and this is an actual scrapbook page and i have seen how people <laughs> i've seen folks who do this and they have two full pages so you open both pages and you've got like four full size um, scrapbook pages when you you know open the middle flaps so if you have something that you want to you know a, a really large event or something that you want to kind of keep all together, you could do that. Um, if you have, you know, just keep in mind, you've got to have the space when you're looking at it <laughs> to look at it. So this one, <clears throat> I modified this page specifically for this photo. So I measured it and then um, cut my 12 by 12 page down so that it would fit uh, this photo because I kind of wanted this to be the center uh, of attention on the page. And then it also gave me some nice room to put some photos and journaling on the back side here. And then of course, just some more photos um, from Audrey's softball team. Okay, so just another little uh, tip on 
using product differently. Okay, and how um, how is that attached? So this is um, super strong adhesive. This this is um, you can watch the video to take it apart. Um, I mean, I actually put it together in that other video, but you just get an old scrapbook page and cut it to whatever size you want. You can do a four four inch. This this is what I think eight inches, eight inches, a little more than eight eight between the jeeping, um, whatever size you want. And then you can score. So you, you get a, you know, part of it, you score it right here like this. Okay. And then you add your adhesive down here and you stick that to the page and that, and that is actually under this border strip, that adhesive. So super strong adhesive under there like photo tape or um, extra strength crafters tape. And then um, I put the, the border strip on top and then this just folds over. And because it has the Jeep edge, you can just cut the page protector to whatever size you make your fold out page, okay? So hopefully that makes sense, right? Just flip, flip out whatever size you want, you can add in. So it's an alternative to the six by 12 peekaboo pocket, right? Like now, most of the time I use the six by 12s, but before that, you know, this was another really fun option for adding room to your scrapbook pages, but peekaboo pockets can help too. Okay, just a few extra little um, tips. So, okay, woo! All in one place too, right, Nancy? <laughs> okay, um, let's uh, let's see if I can go back. Um, let's see. Oh, thank you, Darlene. I'm I'm happy to share all these fun ideas. Okay, um, uh, happy album pages. I went through that. The peekaboos, the heat sealer. I talked about that. Journaling, Canva, product. Um, Oh, one last little thing I also want to remember. Where did I do it? I did it. Is don't forget about your index sheets. And what do I mean by index sheets? I think I did it in here somewhere. Where did I do it? Um, you can get some fun little patterns and textures from the slip that goes in your um, paper packs. Okay, where, where did, oh, here, this one. So I used this little circle where it says make a wish. I'm gonna share one second. Let me get um, fresh focus here. Don't forget using your index sheets. Okay, this is what I call an index sheet. And you can see I actually kind of cut out to these little patterned uh, pictures this is photo safe. It's, you know, the same stuff that they print our paper on, but it's got the little mini prints of our paper. And these are so fun to use in our layout. So in, this is the same print that's on here, this big leafy print, but it is a little miniature version. Let me see if I can get close enough. You guys can see that of um of that paper hope you guys see oh there that's too close little mini version of the paper that i used with a die and instead of this size it's this little mini size right so um you could use this with punches you could use this with tabs you could use this with the circle punch you know all these different things um but don't forget the little mini versions that come in our index sheet uh for our paper packs okay let's see i am gonna come back i think i talked about everything um let's see um, okay, I think I got all my notes that I wanted to make sure to talk about tonight. So I will come back to the chat and see if there are <clears throat> questions. 
and, uh, you know, see if there's some other things we can go over to make our pages fun and clever. <laughs> okay. Um, purple glitter pen. <laughs> Are you saying, Jennifer, purple glitter pen from the invoices that I love to write with purple gl glitter pens? Okay. I will share a favorite. Hold on. Just because you asked. Um, give me one sec. Um, and then I'll, I'll go up. So if you, if I missed your question, you want to make sure I get your question. You might want to pop it again to the bottom. This, um, is so funny. I went to, I'm going to give a shout out to the paper rabbit in Montrose, California. I went to the paper rabbit probably 30 years ago and they are still in business and they had one of my absolute favorite brands of pens that I have not been able to find this many. Um, in fact, I'm also almost thinking about stocking it in my store. I love this brand so much. It's called Uli, O-O-L-Y, O-O-L-Y, Uli. And um, they have the coolest glitter stuff. <laughs> So that is um, when you see me signing my invoices, you know, my thank yous and everything and all those fun colors and glitter and um, they might even smell like fruit or something because some of them are scented glitter pens like this one looks like it's blueberry and glitter. Um, it's Uli. These are all Uli and I'm obsessed with, <laughs> with Uli. Um, pens. So uh, there you go. That's my little secret. Okay, let me come to the um, the chat and see. Okay. Um, yes. Oh, good. Got the flop stoppers, Trisha. Okay, excellent. Um, all right. <laughs> they have they have the the coolest pens. Um, so that is uh, the brand I love. Thank you, Nancy. I am so thankful for you. Glad you could join. Um, yes. Okay. So lots of um, any questions. Let me see. Da, 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 da. Okay. Um, oh, Mary says Stampin' Up! has double-sided adhesive sheets and so did Close to My Heart. But yeah, Close to My Heart might be sold out. Yeah, I, I think that there's some good ones on the market. So um, hopefully we'll, we'll, you know, be able to grab some. The one I have is made by Elizabeth Crafts and I've noticed it doesn't, it, it's really, really sticky. Like if you want something to stick, but it doesn't cut cleanly with my dies. So that's why I'm kind of on the lookout for a new, um, a new version for, uh, adhesive backing. Okay. Terry has, um, what punch is used on the multi-pocket page you cut apart for the slits? That is also linked on my Amazon page. And it is a heavy duty, um, it's called an ID, ID tab punch. So this is the one that I have and it cuts that kind of rounded oval um, out of paper. So you can see you slide it in here and it cuts that tab that's just perfect for the straps to go through. Um, so that's what I use. This also has a really nice um, small, it's a double one, and it makes a really nice small hole for uh, punches too. But it is super heavy duty, um, and that's on my Amazon page. It's in the description. The link to my Amazon page is in the description. Um, Oh yeah. Kelly says tweezers work really well for removing the backing. Yeah. And you know what? Lynette sent me the most awesome, ridiculously sharp. She's going to slap my hand. Oh no. Here's, here's the, here it is with, with the cover on it. <laughs> but these are, um, really great tweezers. In fact, I don't think I've linked these Lynette. She said they're also fabulous for if you, you know, have one of those punches, it'd be more like a punch like this and you get something stuck in there to tweeze out, you know, the little pieces of paper, super sharp. So you're right. I need to start remembering to use my tweezers for getting those backings off. Thank you. Great tip. 
Okay. Um, let's see. Anything else I missed? Um, let's see. Um, photo flaps back in stock. My photo flaps. Photo flaps. Um, the peekaboo pockets are in stock, if that's what you're thinking about. The photo templates are still, I'm still looking for the pink boxes. Those are out of stock. My sentiment stickers, um, I did get some more of these boxes with the um, dividers. So these are back in stock in my shop. So the green boxes are, and let's see. Hopefully that answered <laughs> the right question. Okay. Um, okay, so did I get, I hopefully got most of your questions. Yes, Canva is free. Um, you can, I do have the pro version um, because that gives me access just to some more features like more fonts. Uh, so it's all up to you, but I used the free um, version for a long, long time before I bought, I bought the pro version. Okay, so let me just give you a couple quick um, run through again. So when you are looking at ways of making your pages more fun and clever, remember my top five tips, which are be creative with your journaling, be creative with your peekaboos, be creative with your types of pages you use in your albums, be creative with your photos, and also with your product. Think outside that box. I also want to remind you that the pop crop is coming up next Saturday, a week from tomorrow for April. And I just love my pop stars. <laughs> we have a lot of fun creating for four hours every Saturday at the pop crop. And this Saturday, and I have to just say another huge, huge thank you for Donna Last, um, in the March pop crop, she gave us an amazing presentation on uh, genealogy and all the different ways we can do that with our albums. It was fantastic. So that was our topic-focused pop crop. April is back to uh, where we will have a sketch, a quick cuts layout, and a border idea. So, um yeah, have fun at the Pop Crop with me this coming Saturday. And if you're interested in signing up, you can just um, take a look on my website and check that out. So, um, flopping over. Oh, yeah, yeah, the flop stoppers. Those are on my personal website, on um, on uh, my Craft Some Joy website. So let me just actually take a minute and um, pop on over, do a quick screen share over there. And um, for those of you who are new, you just uh, go to craftsomejoy.com, come on over to the shop button, and the first drop down is the Scrap Some Joy shop. And just as a reminder, every week I have a special that I release on Tuesday. And this Tuesday, um, I have a few of the Party Time Bright collections left with a free die cut pack that I've created to go with that. And then you can see here's the new welcoming woodblock prints and the new uh, Q2 sketchbook that I just got in yesterday. And here is the April... Uh, sentiment sticker free gift from my shop. And uh, you can search if you're looking for something. Um, I've been collecting things in my shop for, uh, you know, a good three years now. So I may have what you're looking for. You can search for it uh, by putting it in the search bar for my shop. But I also try to kind of rotate things around so you can see what's new. And if you go to the sidebar, you can also, everything's tagged. So if you're looking for border maker, you can just click on border maker and see all the border maker cartridges that I have in stock. If you are looking for my exclusives, 
you can just click on exclusives. And these are things that you will only find at Craft Some Joy because I've created them. <laughs> so these are the um, different things from, uh, from my uh, space to you. And uh, some new title stickers are in there. And these are the sentiment stickers that I showed quite a few times tonight. So uh, just easily able to do that. And then you can um, go back to all and see just if you want to just scroll, you can just scroll the shop. <laughs> okay, so lots of good ideas there. Lots of good fun things there. Um, and yeah, that's where the flop stoppers are. You got it, Sherry. Good. So um, that's where uh, all Craft Some Joy things live. <laughs> Let me come back here one second. And any other last question? Oh, Susan has a question. Plastic boxes. Oh, did I just show that? Yep. The plastic boxes. So those will be um, right here the sentiment sticker storage case, I am working on getting some pink boxes. So um, as soon as I have the templates and uh, hope to make some more collections for you this week and then um, get some, some more boxes so I can add those back into the shop. Okay, um, hopefully that answered all the questions, all the questions, yes. April 13th. Did I have the wrong date? Uh -huh. Yes, April 13th. <laughs> Thank you. Yes. Um, all right. All right, my friends. It was so good spending some time with you tonight. We had a lot to go through, didn't we? So many fun and clever ideas. Again, trying to keep all these things in one place for you so that uh, if you're ever kind of interested in like, what did Lauren say? How do you do that? You can come back here. But again, remember, you can search my YouTube channel also for different videos and things um, if you're looking for inspiration in a certain area or topic. Okay, so thanks so much for love all the thumbs up. I appreciate that, my friends. I, I do. And for your comments. And uh, for being here tonight. So I hope you have a wonderful rest of your weekend. And I look forward to seeing you again soon. And until next time, I hope you take time to craft some joy. Bye for now.